Welcome back, YouTube. As you've probably already heard, Electronium has scheduled a major network upgrade to its blockchain, scheduled for May 30th, 2018, 13 days from the time that I'm recording this video. What I'm going to do in this video is walk you through, step by step, what you need to do to prepare for the upgrade. If you like the video, give me a like, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell. Thanks everybody, and let's get to it. Alright everybody, so as you probably know, Electronium, the team at Electronium, has been working really hard to upgrade and change some of the little things that have caused problems and that looking forward towards the future will help facilitate uh, growth within the network, better transaction speed, and also a big one for the mining community is to kick all of the ASIC users off of the network. And that will open the network back up to the GPUs and CPU miners. Now understand what I'm about to go through does not apply to your wallet in the Android Play Store. If you've downloaded the app this video is not for you. If you downloaded a paper wallet and run the Electronium daemon to update, change, send, uh, receive money or electronium, then this video is for you. And this is a must do for anybody who's wanting to stay connected, have the correct software on the electronium network post May 30th, which is 13 days away as of the recording of this video. So as you can see, I'm on the Electronium website. If you navigate to Electronium.com, this is the home page. What we're going to do is look at the blog page, see the latest news from Electronium. You can see the latest update, critical, Electronium network upgrade. This has been posted to Twitter, Facebook. It's on various social media pages. Let's go ahead and cover this if you haven't read through all of this. And I'm just going to touch on these really quick um, and kind of hit the high points. I don't want to read the entire thing, but as you may be aware, our version 2 network upgrade is planned for the 30th of May 2018. Block height 307,500. The estimated time of upgrade will be 930 UTC to enable you to continue trading mining electronium it is critical that you update your electronium nodes and wallet software in advance of our planned network upgrade the latest date you should update is by the 29th of May however we suggest that you switch now as a matter of urgency all transactions created with the latest RPC and CLI wallets which is what we're going to cover today will be accepted after the upgrade block. However, if you have any transactions in the mempool that were generated with old versions of the CLI and RPC, they will fail and be returned to the sender. Upgrade Overview The major release is aimed at increasing transaction speed and minimizing transaction size in preparation for our mass adoption and an exponential increase in global transaction volume. All right, the first one and the big one, anti-ASIC, implementation of ASIC resistance. This is where we're going to fork the proof of work and move away from the current algorithm so that the ASIC cannot stay on the network, cannot mine the new proof of work. So let's take a look. Currently, 
there's 1800 uh, 18 I'm sorry 1866 1866.72 mega hashes worth of hash power on the network if you're a miner like myself you've already realized that this brings the profitability way down basically right now the ASICs are running the entire network which in itself can cause issues 51% things of that nature the 51% attack uh, which has been covered in other videos but if you were a miner and you were mining prior to these ASICs coming online they really put a hurting on all of the GPU miners so let's continue transfer fee increase we've increased our base fee from 0 0.01 ETN to 0 0.1 ETN. Okay, that that is that is an intended. Uh, although it sounds like oh, it's not a good thing, it is for the transactional volume. Uh, these people that are making very small transactions to clog up the network and slow the network down to be malicious, that's going to do away with a lot of that stuff. Reduce privacy. Disabling Ring CT and mix in privacy features means we can significant excuse me can fit significantly more transactions into each block than with them enabled. Mempool life to three days, and this is another big one, guys. During times of high transactional volumes, you will now have three days for the transaction to complete rather than the current 24 hour period. Two minute blocks. We are moving from one to two minute blocks with a significant decrease, which will significantly decrease the chance of an orphan block being created. Block reward. We are doubling the block reward to ensure that daily ETN block reward is unaffected. Reduce difficulty window. We are reducing the difficulty window to check every 360 blocks to adjust the difficulty every 12 hours in line with current uh, with the current adjustment period what happens if you don't update if they don't update my nodes failure to update your nodes in advance of the upgrade on May 30th will result in the following you will no longer be able to trade electronium you will still get valid looking transaction hashes but they would be false you will have to resynchronize your blockchain data after implementing the correct daemon and that's what we're going to go through today any deposits made on or after the network upgrade will not be visible to you any withdrawals on or after network upgrade will not be visible to the end customer ultimately this will re uh, result in a huge amount of additional administration to resolve the above deposit and withdrawal failures we're going to use method two, but method one, compile from source code using our GitHub page, link below. Once compiled, override the old binaries with the new ones. Like I said, we're going to do method two. I'm going to show you and walk you through that. From our GitHub release page, link is below. Once downloaded, you will need to check the checksum on the zip files to confirm that they are the official versions. Unzip the new binaries over the old ones. All right, so we're going to want to click on the github.com electronium electronium release version 2. All right, because we're using Windows, we're going to download the Windows X64 version 2 zip. Now, once that finishes downloading, Go ahead and go to your downloads folder. All right, so what you're going to want to do if you're on Windows 10 is right click, extract all, and you're going to place this in a destination that you choose. So right now, I already have created one folder on my desktop named Electronium. You can put this wherever you want. Guys, I would strongly recommend um, one of the things that I do to keep my coins safe is 
keep this information offline unless I want to update the daemon or I want to make a transaction on the blockchain through my wallet. So I would recommend uh, putting this on possibly a thumb drive, maybe make a, a backup copy of it and keep this in your safe along with your paper wallet. So for now, we're just going to put this on the desktop. We're going to hit extract. All right. Showing my files. Let me go ahead and close this out. All right. You can see all the files that it downloaded. Let's go ahead and create a new folder to put all of these in. And let's just call this YouTube. All right. And I'm going to click and drag all of these files over to our folder. Now let's open up our folder. And here we see all the relevant files, all the new files. All right. So the one that we're going to be concerned about right now is the Electronium D or the Electronium Daemon. So I'm going to double click it, left click, and you're going to notice that Windows, since it is an executable fi type file, uh, it's Windows Defender is going to give you a warning. Now we can go into Windows Defender and add this file as an excluded file from Windows Defender so that it does not scan it and it does not bring up this warning. We're going to go ahead and skip that right now. All you need to do is hit more info. You see Electronium D executable. Run anyway. It's going to give me another warning. I'm going to say I want it only to work on a private network. I'm going to allow access. Now, as you can see, mine started, since I've already started updating my node, mine started at block 23,301. The thing that I want you to make sure that you see here is at the top, May 2018, version 2.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. That's important because the old one is going to be version 1.1. Make sure if you see anything other than version 2.0.0.0 here, then it did not load the way it's supposed to load. Or you copied the files to the wrong location and you started the wrong file. So make sure that it shows version 2. All right, while it's starting the synchronization, Let's go and take a look at downloading a wallet, um, an offline wallet. Okay, so we're going to bring up a web browser and we're going to do a search for Electronium offline wallet. All right, you can see here, Electronium Paper Offline Wallet, Offline Wallet Generator. So it looks to me that the latest version, I could be wrong, if there is another version, please let me know in the comments below, but it looks like the latest version is Wallet V1.6 HTML. So we're gonna click on that. Make sure that you are on Make sure that you are on the correct Electronium website. Make sure that you're on the website and not a phishing website. Another strong recommendation that I have is when you're going to create the wallet, once you've clicked on this page, you can actually take your computer offline. In other words, disconnect the internet connection 
as you can see here, for maximum security, you should download a version to run from a USB stick on a PC or Mac that is not connected to the internet. Download the zip here. I'm not going to do that with this particular demonstration because this wallet is only going to be used for demonstration purposes. I will never put any Electronium in it, especially after I've um, exposed it to the internet or the world through this YouTube video. Let's go ahead and click the let's get started. Now, what we're going to do here is move our mouse around all sorts of crazy directions. And this is going to create the wallet. There we go. Your Electronium wallet is ready. To safeguard this wallet, it is important to print or save the PDF and store it in a safe location. As I said, I would uh, print this off with your thumb drive that you keep the uh, data on, your wallet information, your passwords, your keys, I would keep that offline at all times. The only time you want to use that, the only time that you want to use that or connect it to a computer, and hopefully it's a safe, non-infected computer, is when you're ready to make a transaction or send uh, or receive uh, electronium into the wallet. So we want to save wallet as PDF. It's generating it. And you're going to have to have a PDF viewer for this. Here we go. So this basically just shows you how to fold it, what it'll look like when you get done. All right, so I'm going to close all of this down going to ask me if I'm sure I want to leave. Yes. All right. As you can see, our Electronium uh, daemon, or the Electronium D, is synchronizing with the network. As you can see here, our upgrade is at 307,000. I believe it was 500. So we're still a few days away from that as of the recording of this video. But you can see that this is going to take a long time. This may even take overnight. Um, on a really slow machine, you may be looking at a full day. You just let it run in the background. Your CPU processor uh, in your computer is going to run at a higher cyclical rate, which means that the processor percentage is going to be higher. Um, and it may, on some computers, render that computer fairly unusable or slow or sluggish so just be prepared but this is going to take a while to sync let's go ahead and look at our downloads again we see we have here our PDF wallet all right so the first thing that we want to do is grab this address. This is our public wallet address. I'm going to copy this. All right, so after we have copied this, we want to come down here and we want to type in Notepad. Click on Notepad and we're going to paste the address. Now, very important here, folks. You see there's spaces between these. We want to pull out these spaces, but we don't want to um, delete any characters. So in between the B and L, there's a space. Let's take it out. In between the N and the C, there's a space. Let's take it out. When you actually go to use this address, you cannot have the spaces, which Windows is automatically putting those spaces in there because the line lines are all separate so it's actually putting it in three separate sections all right you're going to want to save that again i would save it to your uh, area that you have your files uh, securely saved um, like i said the thumb drive or something like that for this demonstration we're just going to simply put it on our desktop and we're going to call it etn you call it whatever you want. Click Save. 
All right. So for the remainder of, remainder of the demonstration, we need to have this network, uh, this electronium uh, daemon, synced to the network. All right, guys. So while we're waiting on our daemon to sync, what I want to do is go ahead and create the wallet. Really, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to go ahead and create this. You should really let your uh, daemon go ahead and fully sync to the network. So I'm going to put that disclaimer in here. You need to let the daemon fully sync to the network. And at the bottom, when it gets done, it will say synced. Since this is just an instructional video to show you the steps, I'm going to go ahead and forego that and create the wallet while we're waiting on the daemon to sync. So you're going to want to go back to your PDF, whether you're looking at PDF viewer or you're looking at a um, wallet in a browser such as this on Windows 10. You're going to want to change. We've already wrote down or copied our public wallet address. We need to get the other two addresses. OK, so we're going to copy this and paste it over into our text file along with the private view key. Now I went ahead and done that already. You can see here. All right, so you can see here that I already have all of the addresses from our paper wallet copied over. So what we're going to do now is type CMD for the command prompt. We're going to click it. We see here that currently in C users the Patriot. So what we want to do is change the directory where we have our folder open. This is the easiest way to do it. Right click copy the address of the folder that we want to get into and we're going to type in CD for change directory space and then right click in Windows 10 we'll paste the string in and we press enter and there we go we've changed directory so now we're in the folder uh, that we've created here the next thing that we want to do is get to the electronium wallet CLI what I want to do is basically import our wallet that we just created into our file system here. So don't worry, don't worry about writing this down right now, but I will put this in the description below. This is your wallet name. This is important. This is the uh, executable file, and this is uh, the command for importing the wallet data or the wallet so I just named this YouTube you can name it whatever you want be sure to put the dot etn at the end whatever you want that name to be we're gonna copy and we're gonna paste that over press enter and now it's asking for our standard address our standard address is our public address so copy, paste, now it's asking for a secret spend key. That's our, what we call our private spend key. So copy, paste, oh, as you can see, I missed a step and it caught me. I have a space in here. I didn't even notice that when I copied it a few minutes ago before I started the video. So that's good. You can see me making errors and you can uh, you know what to look for if you see the same error. So we're gonna take that space out. We're gonna take the space out here. I'm gonna go ahead and resave this file. Alright, so let's try it again. All right, so we're going to have to go back through it. So Electronium, I just up arrow, 
To go back to it, press enter. And now we're going to have to enter our public address again. Copy, paste, enter. And then our private spend key, which is the secret spend key. Copy, paste, maybe it'll work this time. There we go. Secret view key, which is the private view key. All right, paste, enter. Now, you want to make this wallet password uh, as safe and secure as you can. No monkey, no monkey one, two, three, or anything that's very easy to crack. So I would recommend you writing this down and keeping this in a safe location, uh, whether it be on the thumb drive, whether it be on a piece of paper, in a safe, or in a lockbox, or something like that. Keep it out of view. You don't want anybody to get a hold of this. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a password. I would recommend making it long and difficult, something that you might have to copy and paste. All right, so we're going to put it in again. All right, so it generated my wallet, and as you can see here, ETNK8IDZ, ETNK8IDZ, so it did use the public address that I put in first. All right, so at this point, you're just going to press Enter, and it's going to start the refresh process. Now, if you look up here, you can see that it went ahead and created the files, the keys, text document, and ETN file. Every time you open this wallet, you're going to need to have the password and uh, when the daemon, when it first opens, when you double click this, whenever you go to open the wallet, you double click the electronium-wallet-cli and then the first thing that's going to ask you is your uh, wallet name and that's what you're gonna put in youtube.etn in my in my case and then you're gonna put in the password and then it will start the refresh in the background and again this can take quite some time this is not going to work 100% uh, if we were to sit here and wait on this because the daemon is not updated yet again this was just for brevity of making the video because I want to get the video out because uh, it's very important that you guys go ahead and start this process. Now, as it's doing that in the background, we have essentially completed the task that I wanted to show you. Uh, but one other thing. If you already have uh, a wallet and you want to update the software or update the version Let's say you're on 1.1 currently and you already have a wallet downloaded and set up just like what we went through. Very simple to do. You're going to copy these files and then you're going to open up wherever you have your other old wallet and old files situated at and you're going to delete all of these files from the old location and copy these in to the old location. So you're taking the new files and placing them, replacing the old uh, 1.1 files with the 2.0, version 2.0 files. And you're going to want to keep, obviously, if you've already have a, if you already have a wallet, um, if you already have a wallet created, uh, you're going to save yourself a lot of time by doing it like this. Or if you want, you can go ahead and import the wallet that you already have, just like I did a minute ago on the command line, into this new file. The only problem with that is it's going to take an additional amount of time to sync. Not a big deal, not very difficult. Uh, this was easy. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And guys, if you like the content, if you found it valuable, 
please like the video and subscribe and click the notification bell and I'll try to put out these educational videos as often as I possibly can but check out the rest of my channel see if it's something that you may be interested in and I'd love to see you again thanks again everybody talk to you later